The most obvious ways in which millennials and Gen Z in China are misunderstood abroad is they're often treated like aspiring Westerners with different haircuts. There's this expectation for young people that modernization needs to be equated with Westernization. That's something that might have been true 50, 60 years ago, uh, but there's this vibrant community of young people who have their own constellation of considerations that are unique uh, from that of the West. I think of this also as cultural gravity um, because there's so many of them, right? There's 440 million millennials in China, which is larger than the population of the United States and Canada combined. There's enough cultural gravity here in Asia where they're what influences them, what they think is cool, what they think is sexy, what they think is desirable, what they think is not desirable. It's unique to here. And the influences are increasingly Japanese, they're Korean, they come from China itself. This sense that modernization has to mean Westernization often leads people to misunderstand this young generation. Different than older generations in China, this younger generation is growing up with much more consumer clout around the world. When you look at China's role in the global economy, it means that what they want, what they find interesting, sexy, attractive, global brands have to pay attention to that in a way that was not the case 10, 20, 30 years ago. And so right now, there is this exploration of modern Chinese and Asian identity that is being expressed with dollars and renminbi, that is impacting not just China, but all of Asia and, and the rest of the world. And so who are we going to be and what role would we like to play on the global stage? People focus on politics a lot, it's easy to track, but mostly as a cultural center, this young generation is deciding that really as we speak. Sitting here in Singapore and thinking about China specifically, Within the Asian context, China has the most compressed period of development of any of the miracle economies, right? The Asian miracle economies. And so China is this sort of strange experiment in what happens if you get 50 years of change, which by the way, in, in the United States took 100 years, but 50 years in Asia, what if it takes 25 or 30 years in, in China? The generation gaps that exist in the West are generation gulfs in most of Asia, and those generation gulfs are even wider in China. And so the divisions between the generations are more difficult to navigate in China than in other places in Asia, because the disconnect between someone who was growing up in the Cultural Revolution versus someone who was growing up, you know, around the time of the Beijing Olympics is just massively different. The cultural intergenerational gulfs that most Asian countries have to navigate those are exaggerated in China in a way that demand even more special attention from families, from businesses, both looking at their own internal structure as well as the evolving consumer. 